Hi, my name is Danielle Tate. And I'm a physical therapist who works primarily with patients who are dizzy or have balance issues. And today I wanted to talk about a condition called BPPV and what this condition is with these crystals or rocks in your ears. So first of all, what does BPPV stand for? It stands for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. It's not gonna kill you, happen suddenly with changes in position, and you get this false sensation of movement when there shouldn't be movement. For some people, they describe it as the room is spinning. Is it common? Yes, it's very common. About 20% of all dizziness seen in medical offices is due to this condition. It's much more common in the older population, especially as we start to age. About 50% of people that see their doctor with dizziness is due to BPMV, and even in one study it's shown that about 1 in 10 people of an older population in an urban setting have this, don't even know they have it. They think it's a normal part of aging to be a little dizzy when they change positions. So if you have BPMV, you may feel dizziness, a little lightheaded, possibly nauseated, and also imbalanced or just not steady on your feet. It all has to do with this little organ right here, and this is inside your head. So you have your outer ear, which is your ear canal, kind of where you can touch with a Q-tip. Then you have your middle ear, which is including the eustachian tube or where you might get um, middle ear infections and also where your hearing bones are located. And then you've got your balance or your vestibular organ, which is located inside your skull. This is what the organ looks like. We have two smaller organs called your otolith organs, the utricle and the saccule, that sit inside the vestibular organ. They look like little jelly beans and they're covered in this jelly and then coated in these crystals. Everybody has them. We have a lot of them and they've got an important job. They tell us which way's up and which way's down. Then we have these little canals here. They act like your accelerometers. So they measure where your head is moving in space. For instance, if you shake your head side to side, look up and down, or even tilt side to side. They communicate with your brain, which then communicate with your eyes to give you a nice steady picture while you move. Uh, also being able to focus on a target while moving your head. The problem with beep and BV arises when these little crystals fall off of the otolith organs and then can drop into the canals like stone sinking in water. When these crystals roll around in the canals here, they inappropriately trigger it to fire. So basically, one ear, which these crystals are rolling around in, is telling your brain that your head is moving when it's really not. And it results in this abnormal eye movement called nystagmus. Here's a video example of nystagmus. This patient is lying down flat on a table. Her head is tilted back and you can see her eye is moving in a really weird manner. This is not something that you can fake and is actually very easy to use to diagnose which ear and which canal those crystals might be in in order for us to treat them. So in order to treat, there are many maneuvers, but one of the most common ones is the Epley maneuver. And this is because there's about 70% to 85% chance that your BPBB is located in the posterior canal. And I'm use this model to kind of demonstrate what um, I'm talking about. So you can see you've got your hearing end of the organ here, your cochlea, and then you've got your three little canals. These little rings represent displaced crystals and how when you change positions, those crystals can move around in your head. So when those crystals move, they make you feel dizzy. So just to keep things a little simple, we're just gonna focus on the posterior canal. I'm gonna take these little rings off. If you're looking at the back of a person's head, this is your posterior canal, all right? And these would be these little crystals that are displaced. The, the organ itself sits in your head about a 45 degree angle. So when we go to treat or use a maneuver, the idea is to try to scoot those little particles from where they're stuck in the canal and back to where they belong in the utricle. So for instance, in an Epley maneuver, what we do first is we would turn the patient's head to the side that we're going to treat. What this does is it puts the canal perpendicular to the floor and parallel to gravity. This is going to allow those crystals to drop out of the canal. So after we turn your head, you're then going to lie down on the table and extend that head backwards. So here you can see those crystals moved from the back portion of the canal to the middle portion of the canal. So because they moved, you should get dizzy in this position. You wait about 30 seconds to a minute after the dizziness stops. Once the dizziness stops, we then leave your head back on the table and we turn your head 90 degrees to face the opposite direction. All right. 
Now, you notice there's no movement of that ring, so you shouldn't get dizzy. However, when we go to turn over into the next position, which you turn onto your side, tucking your chin into your, into your shoulder so that your nose is down into the bed, those crystals move from the back portion of the canal to the top of the canal and will drop back into the spot where they belong. This means that you could get dizzy in this position, which is actually a good indicator that the maneuver is working. So by the time you wait 30 seconds to a minute for that dizziness to stop, you go to sit up and those crystals are right back where they belong and no longer in the canal, which means that you shouldn't get dizzy anymore. This uh, maneuver itself has about an 80% cure rate the first time it's applied. But like I had mentioned, there are a lot of different type of maneuvers for different types of conditions with these crystals in different canals. So it's very important to see a specialist or somebody who has a lot of knowledge of BPV in order to diagnose where the crystals are and how it should be treated. Um, from there, they can also teach you how to treat at home, but it's important to know what's going on first. One way that you can find help is by using vestibular.org. This is the Vestibular Disorders Association. They've got a great resource and a great website, which I'm actually going to show you here now. So if you pull up your browser and you type in vestibular.org, you'll see their homepage here. They have a lot of information about different types of vestibular disorders. They have more educational resources, but you'll also notice is finding help and support. If you click there and you pull that up, you can click find a vestibular specialist and you can search by area code or by city to find one close to you in order to find some help. And these are people who are registered with the Vestibular Disorders Association who have knowledge in treating vestibular dysfunction and getting help and diagnosis is the first step to feeling a little bit better. We also have vestibular.today. Um, there you've got vestibular related blogs and additional videos. You can also learn more about the um, vestibular organ model that we use for patient education in our office. And I hope this was helpful and enjoy your day.